Hello everyone and welcome to number theory. Uh, last time we pretty much ran the gamut of things that we could talk about relating to Diophantine equations, uh, particularly applied Diophantine equations. Uh, now we're going to go on to another topic and uh, this is not only at the heart of number theory but also related areas like uh, encryption, coding theory, and so forth. So uh, this is a hot topic in number theory and in other areas of math. Number theory, primes and composites. A natural number P greater than one is prime exactly when its only positive divisors are one and itself. And as a consequence of this definition, note for future reference that we do not consider one to be a prime number. Uh, one is not a prime number. Uh, I hate to make a big deal out of that, but actually it's an important distinction to make. Now, what about those numbers those natural numbers greater than one that are not prime. Well, any natural number greater than one that is not prime is called composite. So all natural numbers greater than one fall into exactly one of two categories. They're either prime or they're composite. Now, let's look at some theorems here. If P is prime and P divides the product of A and B, where A and B are uh, integers, then either P divides A or P divides P, but one or the other. Now, we've sort of proved this before. Uh, let's look at our proof. So we'll let our hypotheses be given. P is prime, and it divides the product AB. And you know what? I may have to write that out in a second. I may have to rewrite that uh, just so that I can diagram that properly.
that's what I'm trying to show. So there's my hypothesis, and here's my conclusion. We do have some help. So that says something to the effect of if C divides AB and greatest common divisor of CA equals 1 then C divides B. Well, let's see now. Let's apply Euclid's lemma to what we have. And think about how it is that we prove an if-then proposition. That we assume the hypothesis to be true, and we show that the conclusion has to be true. Now, in this case, our conclusion is a compound statement. P divides A or P divides B. Now, to show that this is true, we're going to show that it can't be false. What's the only way that a disjunction, one thing or another, an OR statement. What's the only way that an OR statement can be false? Isn't it false only when both of these things are false? So to show that this is true, we're going to show that it can't be false. In other words, we're going to show that both of these things can't be false at the same time. If one of them is false, then the other one's got to be true. That's how we do it. So, we assumed our hypothesis to be true. is prime and P divides a B. Now we'll show that our conclusion P divides A or P divides B is true. P divides A or P divides B can't 
be false. That's what we're going to show. It's the same thing as showing that this is true. Now, that means that both of these things, P divides A and P divides B, both of these things can't be false at the same time. If one of them is false, the other one has to be true. Okay. Well, if P doesn't divide A, that means that P is not a factor of A. But P is the only factor of 1. I'm sorry. P is the only factor of itself other than 1. So the greatest common divisor of P and A has to be 1, because P only has two divisors. And since P doesn't divide A, P is not a factor of A, or P is not a divisor of A. So the greatest common divisor of P and A is 1. So where does that leave us? Let's see. We have P divides AB and greatest common divisor of P and A is 1. Well, son of a gun, by Euclid's lemma, P has to divide B. You know what? We're done. That we've shown That we, in retrospect, we show that those things can't both be false. That we showed that. P divides A and P divides B can't both be false. And that means P divides A or P divides B is true. Now, this may be an important proof to review because we may never have done a proof where the conclusion uh, was a disjunction. 
Here's our conclusion. P divides A or P divides B. The standard way of doing a proof in which the conclusion is a disjunction or an or statement is to show that they can't both be false. Assume one of them is false and show that the other one has to be true. You know what? I wasn't planning on doing this, but uh, you forced me into it. Uh, that's okay. It'll only take me a couple of minutes. Here's the hypothesis, here's the conclusion. So we show that the conclusion can't be false by showing that Q and R can't both be false. And how do we do this? We do this by assuming One of them is false, and showing that the other must be true. And I'm sort of beating this to death because I think that it's unlikely that so far in our mathematical experience, we've actually had to prove a statement of this form where the conclusion was a disjunction or an or statement. But the standard way of doing this is to assume that one of them is false and then show that that means that the other has to be true. In other words, they can't both be false. Okay, onward and upward.
let's say that P is prime and P divides the product of N factors. Well, P has to divide at least one of those factors. So here are our factors, A1, A2, A3, dot, 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 A sub N. P has to divide A sub I for some I between 1 and N. And normally I wouldn't do this proof, but it's a great induction proof, and we may not have had a lot of experience doing a proof like this. So let's go for it. Okay, this thing is our proposition, P of N. The first thing I'm going to do is show that my proposition is true for N equal to. So I suppose that P is prime. And that P divides A sub 1 times A sub 2. In our previous theorem, we had P, oh my goodness, what on earth did I do? Uh, P divides, I left something out here, P divides the product of A1 and A2, please forgive me. Uh, I took all of my vitamins when I got up this morning, and I definitely took my stupid pill too. Uh, Maybe that's one vitamin I don't need. But anyway, yes, this should say P divides A1 times A2. Well, in our previous theorem, we had P being prime and P divides A times B. And either P divides A or P divides B. So this is true by our previous theorem. So now, assume that P of N is true for N equal K and show that Nah, I don't like the way I wrote that. Bear with me. Let's just do it this way. Assume that P of K is true and show that P of K plus 1 is true. Now, that is show that if P is prime, and P 
divides a1, a2, a k then p divides a sub i or sum i between 1 and k. And this is what we assume. And now here's what we got to show. Oh, by the way, before I write that, this assumption, the, the assumption that this is true, has a name. This is our induction hypothesis. We have a right to assume that that's true. Okay. And now we're going to show if P is prime, and P divides a1, a2, dot, 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 a sub k, a sub k plus 1, then P divides a sub i or sum i between 1 and k plus 1. And I think we can do that quickly. then either P divides, and the trick here is to write this product as the product of two factors. So A1, A2, dot, 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 A sub K, or P divides a sub k plus 1. Because we can look at this thing as being the product of this times that. We can look at it as the product of two factors. Well, let's see, by our induction hypothesis, if P divides this thing, then it has to divide P sub I for I between 1 and K.
Now we put this thing and this thing together, and that just says P divides A sub I for some I between 1 and K plus 1. So in other words, we just showed that P of K plus 1 is true. Hence, if P divides A1, A2, dot, 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 A sub N, then P divides A sub I, for some i between 1 and n. And I hate to say this, I think this is going to be a short lecture, but uh, I will finish up with another one tomorrow. And again, everybody, stay healthy. Stay busy working on good things. Don't worry about the things that we can't do. Just focus on the things that we can do and be safe.